Welcome to anyone watching from Avon High School and possibly KIPP high schools throughout the country. Uh, anyone else who's tuning in for that matter who wants to get a little help with the topic of continuity. And it's probably likely that this is something that you're studying at the very beginning of your advanced placement AV uh, calculus course. And um, it's one of the first instances where students really have to start looking very closely at some very specific notation and a, and a very specific definition of continuity. So basically the, the video here is going to focus more on the first topic that we see here, which are the types of discontin discontinuity and we'll also segue into the formal definition of continuity. So here we go. What I've got here um, at the very top of the page is just a very simple way to think about continuity. It says continuity simply implies that a curve or a graph will have no interruptions. Well, that's true, but the problem with that is that's a very informal way to think about continuity. And you certainly can't define continuity as Oh, a curve that doesn't have any breaks or interruptions in it. We have to be a little bit more specific, and much of the definition is rooted in the idea of the limit. So what I've got here um, on the graphs, I've got four different sketches, and uh, out of the four sketches, I'm illustrating three different examples of where a function would not be continuous. In other words, there is a discontinuity specifically at a point that I'm going to define as C. Now I want you to uh, make sure that you're very aware of the fact that all of these functions are being defined over an open interval A to B. It doesn't really make a big difference if I had defined them to be on a closed interval. So we take a look at the first one and we want to think to, to ourselves, well, well, why is this first graph not continuous? And I doubt that too many of you are thinking about this, but I want to take care of this right now because I believe it or not, I've had some students in the past think that you could sketch this graph and sort of go around this roundabout or this traffic circle like that and have your continuity. But no, that will not work. This open circle is meant to be a hole in the graph. So that is pretty obvious why this particular function is not going to be continuous at C but we want to have a little bit more formal way to explain that. And that's where the right side of this particular page comes into play, where I'm going to have us list the three different criteria for continuity. So for the first picture, for number one, in order for a function f of x here to be continuous at a point x equals c, the following three conditions must be met. So I want to think about what condition is not met that makes this open circle appear? Well, the function doesn't have any value when x is c. So the best way to explain that, using symbols and mathematics, is just simply that f of c does not exist. I suppose you could say f of c is not defined. Typically, as a teacher, I always liked the, the, the phrase does not exist because I thought that that was just a little bit more descriptive. All right, so that kind of makes one think, well, is there a possibility, say, that f of c could exist and possibly the function could, could still not be continuous? Well, if we look at the graph for 2a, we certainly have a situation where f of c does exist. You can see it, it's right here. Whatever that value is right there would be f of c. So that's not the problem. The problem, as you can see up here, is the fact that the limit of the function as x approaches c does not exist. That's why we have this break, right? As we approach c from the left side, the y values tend to that f of c that I wrote. And as we approach c from the right side, the y values tend to be, well, whatever that value there of y would most likely be. And since these two guys here obviously aren't the same, then we can see that our limit doesn't exist. So let's turn that around. What has to happen in order for the function to be continuous? What about the limit must be true? And that particular case would be that this 
limit as x approaches c of the function f of x must exist. Now, before I move on to three, I, I want to talk a little bit about two part b, because in two part b, we have another situation where the limit as x approaches c doesn't exist. You can kind of see that from the left side, we're going to get like a negative infinity possible value there for y. And as we approach c from the right side, we'd get a positive infinity. And you could argue that negative infinity and positive infinity really aren't the same thing. So your function's limit would not exist. But that's also, I want you to, to keep in mind that 2b would happen to fit into this category as well because f of c is not defined either because of the vertical asymptote. So you could say that 2b is really discontinuous for more than one reason. All right, now let's go ahead and move to our third and our final reason why a function could fail to be continuous. And, and this one, I always like to play kind of a game with my students and say, okay, well, well, what if f of c does exist? Okay, we can see that f of c does exist. In fact, that's what we would have right about there, the value f of c. And then let's say that the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. Well, let's take a look at this. If we approach the, the value of c from the left and we approach the value of c or the, the x value of c, let's kind of clarify there from the right, we find that we sort of come together at this y value there. Well, that would mean that this limit does exist. But wait a minute, f of c exists, the limit as x approaches c exists, but you can still see that this function is not continuous. It's got that hole in it. And that's what's happening. Those two things are not equivalent to each other. So the third and final criteria for continuity is that limit that we talked about earlier, the limit as x approaches c of f of x has to be equivalent to f of c. Now, once all three of these things are true, then you can say that that function f of x is continuous at a point. And if you sort of expand that idea at every single point over which that function is defined on the given interval, you could say that the entire function would then be continuous. But we just have to start with it by, by taking it like one point at a time. On my next little page here, I just have a, a really brief synopsis over um, how to determine if a, 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 con a discontinuity might be a removable variety or a non-removable variety. Now, you'll see that I've got these discontinuities divided into a couple of different categories. I've got them so that one can look at them from a graphical standpoint and an algebraic standpoint. And of course, the two discontinuities that we're going to talk about are removable versus non-removable. So if you've got a graph that you're looking at, to determine the type of discontinuity, it's pretty easy. If you can fill a hole, and that would lead to the, 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 the function being continuous, then you've got what's called a removable discontinuity. Now, what do I mean by if you can fill a hole? Well, if you look at graph number one, if you had the physical ability to just color in that open circle and thus make the graph continuous, you've got something that's removable. And it says over here that the graph in picture three is also going to fall into that category. Now I know if you were to fill in that hole, you don't have a function because you fail the vertical line test, but that's not what we're really concerned with. Just the simple hole being filled, causing the function to be continuous, will allow us to classify it as removable. Now, a non-removable is just the opposite. If you fill in that hole, the function does not become continuous. And you can see in the case of 2a, the filling in of that hole is not going to connect the two different pieces. And there's really no hole to fill in for 2b. Now, when you've got a algebraic representation, when you're not dealing with a graph and you don't really care to make a graph, then it's a little bit trickier but it does have a pretty clear sort of division between 
removable versus non-removable. And a removable discontinuity is just simply a factor in the denominator that will cancel. So the, the, the idea of having something in the denominator is going to cause for a discontinuity. But if that particular factor cancels away through some, some type of a fraction reduction, then it's going to be a, a situation where you have a removable discontinuity. Non-removable would be that factor in the denominator that will not cancel. And I've got another video coming up where we're going to go into a little bit more detail about these algebraic characteristics. Anyway, I hope that helps, and we will see you next time.